remind my colleagues and the American people about the fiscal realities that uh, our nation faces and to explain how this uh, health reform legislation would make our fiscal situation worse and our economy suffer even more. I've been here before to highlight how this health care bill is chock full of budget gimmicks to hide its true unmanageable cost. And as I've said before on the floor of the Senate, as a former mayor, former governor, many people have came to me over the years and said, Mayor, you have to do this. Governor, you have to do this. And, and the plea that they had uh, was genuine, and the need that they expressed was genuine. But the fact of the matter is that we couldn't afford what they were asking us to do, and I had to say no. And unfortunately, this legislation, in my opinion, will increase the cost of health care, drive up our national debt, and contribute to unbalanced budgets as far as the eye can see here uh, in the United States. As a former governor and chairman of the National Governors Association, past chairman of the National League of Cities, one gimmick I'm particularly concerned about is the one that puts 14 million additional individuals into the Medicaid program and then asks the states to pick up a portion of the tab. I'm very familiar with what unfunded mandates can do to state and local governments and want to highlight some of the potential consequences of the Medicaid expansion for my colleagues. At a $374 billion cost to federal taxpayers, the health care bill before us would expand Medicaid coverage to all people under 133 percent of the federal poverty level. And because Medicaid costs are shared by the federal and state governments, the states will be on the hook for $25 billion if this expansion uh, during the first 10 years. Now, to put the $25 billion into perspective, let me spend a minute explaining the current fiscal situation of most states in this country. Most states, like my state, and I'm sure like the, the, the uh, President's uh, state, are struggling to make ends meet. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. According to the National Governors Association, the states are in the deepest and longest economic downturn since the Great Depression. In the first two quarters of 2009, state revenues were down 11.7 and 16.6 percent, respectively. At the same time, Medicaid spending, which already makes up an average approximately 22 percent of states' budgets on average, is growing and enrollment in the program is skyrocketing at the levels that it's at today because more and more people are becoming eligible for Medicaid under the current uh, federal law. In Ohio, for example, where the unemployment rate is hovering around 10 and a half percent, 154,000 Ohioans enrolled in the Medicaid program in the last year alone, an 8 percent increase over last year. This is hard to believe, but Medicaid now provides health coverage to nearly 2 million Ohioans almost one out of five residents. Unbelievable. Recognizing this increased demand, states have had some help from the federal government. And earlier this year, Congress provided $87 billion in federal aid to states in the so-called stimulus bill to help states deal with Medicaid costs. Yet this money was not intended to last forever. As it stands right now in December 2010, states will face that's, that's next December. States will face a steep budget cliff when the temporary Medicaid payments coming from the stimulus package expire. And facing this reality, governors across the country are already wondering how they will cover the cost of their existing programs. I recently met with Ray Shapak, who is the uh, uh, executive director of the National Governors Association. He said, Senator, Governor, Mayor, <laughs> He said, we're going to need some help when the money runs out or we won't be able to handle the Medicaid uh, uh, challenges that we have. Not surprisingly, my state's current governor, Ted Strickland, a Democrat, has told me that if Medicaid is expanded, he hopes the federal government will assume most, if not all, the costs. 
In fact, he told the Columbus Dispatch that he has warned officials in Washington that, quote, with our financial challenges right now, we are not in a position to accept additional Medicaid responsibilities, end of quote. I suspect that almost every governor in the country would make that same statement to us here uh, in the Senate. Uh, and by the way, this is, you know, both Republican and Democrat governors, both. I asked Mr. President, how can we in good conscience move forward with this bill and the new mandate it places on states? How can we force the states to make the difficult choices that we are unwilling or unable to make here in Washington? Pass it on to them, we'll pay for it a while, then you guys pick up the cost. Mr. President, I served the people of Ohio as governor for eight years. And I was forced to cut my budget in the beginning four times. I'll never forget it. They were out 5,000 people outside my office screaming because we had uh, made it more difficult or uh, increased the cost of uh, tuition for our colleges. I had to make countless difficult decisions across the board to be fiscally responsible. I understand the demands of soaring health care costs. And as I call that program then, it devoured, Medicaid devoured up to 30% of our state budget. And I referred that to the Pac-Man. I think some people remember the Pac-Man. That was the Pac-Man just eating up money like crazy. It took away money from primary and secondary education, higher education, roads, bridges, county and local government projects, and safety service programs that we wanted to provide for the citizens of Ohio. We had to do it, it was a mandate. And it just sucked up that money, and that meant that we didn't have money for higher ed, secondary primary education, and some of the other responsibilities of the state. With this experience, it became particular, I became particularly concerned with the cost of federal mandates. And I worked tirelessly with state and local governments to help pass the Unfunded Mandates Reform Act. In fact, the first time I ever set foot on the floor of the Senate is the day the Unfunded Mandates Bill passed the United States Senate. It was a wonderful day uh, for Ohio and for this country. I was in the Rose Garden representing state and local governments when President Clinton signed the legislation into law in 1995. After that experience, you can imagine, Mr. President, how it pains me to be standing here today debating legislation that provides for the largest single expansion of the Medicaid program in our country's history and a brand new fiscal liability for states at a time when the states can least afford it. I have serious concern that if this bill becomes law and states are required to take on more, just as the extra stimulus funds disappear, which they're gonna have to do or we'll have to come up with the money, Congress will be forced to spend billions more to keep the Medicaid safety net from completely in the not too distant future. So what I'm basically saying is that when the stimulus money ends in December of next year, the governors are gonna be down here with the bathtub asking us to fill it because if we don't do it, they're gonna to have to knock off thousands of people, millions in the country because they haven't got the money to uh, provide for the program. Now providing extra dollars to states and I, 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 I I predict it's gonna happen. It will become an annual rit uh, ritual for Congress. Just like the doctor's fix has become an annual ritual for Congress. Every year they come in, we're not gonna cut the reimbursement. Uh, next year it's what, 23%. We're gonna fill the hole, and the, and the, governors, and, and the governors are gonna be asking uh, for the same kind of help. It's, 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 it's not only a mandate for them, it's gonna become a mandate for us at a time, uh, Mr. President, when we're least able to, to handle anything like that. So as a former governor and a former mayor, a former county commissioner, I urge my colleagues to consider the impact this bill will have on their respective states. Think about it, talk to your governor, see what it's gonna do to your state. And I hope each of my colleagues will give careful thought to the potentially devastating effects it could have on each of their state budgets. And to concert, consult, as I said, with their governors and talk about the fact that if this happens, what's gonna happen in terms of the Pac-Man eating up more money in their state and their inability to take care of primary and secondary education, higher education, and all the other responsibilities that state government has. Mr. President, I yield the floor.
Mr. President. Senator from Hawaii is recognized. Mr. President, I rise today to address the Department of Defense Appropriations Bill for fiscal year 2010. Mr. President, as you know, the this afternoon.